To begin, we must lay out the job area. Measure the length of the wall to be supported and divide that number into 4 foot segments. No segment should be wider than 48 inches. Once you have established your 4 foot segments, mark them on the floor in front of the wall. Now, adjust the marks so that the straps will be located between the vertical mortar joints, not over them. Each strap requires about 7 inches of clear wall space. If windows, pipes, electrical boxes, or other obstacles prevent you from the desired spacing, you may need to add additional strips to your plan. Once you have laid out the appropriate centers, mark each one with the plumb line from the top course of block to the bottom course of block. Now, mark off 4 inches on each side of the center line, and using a grinder, prepare the surface between these marks. The wall surface must be free of paint and smooth as possible. Remove all bumps and irregularities in the wall with your grinder. Prepare all the surfaces to be laminated and remove any dust with a soft brush. With the prepared area smooth and clean, attach a static mixer to the fortress cartridge set as shown here. Load the cartridge set into the jake gun and dispense a small amount into a box until the material is a uniform green color. Then release the pressure with the thumb button. Note: The warmer the epoxy, the faster it will set up. It's sometimes helpful to warm it when working in cold areas using a hair dryer, small space heater, or setting it in the sun. Be careful, do not overheat, and do not exceed 120 degrees. Apply the epoxy as shown here to the full length of the prepared surface. If the surface is shorter than the 8 foot length of strap, cut the strap accordingly. Using the trowel, spread the epoxy to achieve an even flat coat. Now position the reinforcement strap over the epoxy coating and press into place pushing the wet epoxy through the mesh. Using a trowel, push the epoxy through the mesh and spread it evenly across the reinforcement strap. If dry spots appear, add a little more epoxy and spread it evenly. Note that some areas may pull away from the wall due to slight wall deflections. These areas can be anchored to the wall with the one inch concrete nail with a washer. The next step is to apply a layer of lamination plastic the full length of the strap. Notice we've masked the edges with tape to keep the job neat. With the lamination plastic in place, use the squeegee to spread the epoxy as shown from the top down filling any areas that may be dry. After the epoxy has cured, the plastic and the tape are removed and the installation is complete. For vertical and diagonal cracking, our stitching kit provides all the materials needed to do the repair. In this case, the foundation also has water leakage. Note that the stitch kit does not include injection materials. The repair is made by first preparing an area for a typical crack injection to stop the water leak, and a prepared area for where the carbon fiber grid stitches are to be installed. Once the crack is prepared for injection, the stitches are installed in the same manner as the full length grid straps. A couple of tips on installing stitches. If you lay your lamination plastic out cut to size and place your grid stitch on it, you can apply the epoxy to the stitch as shown. This makes it very easy to apply the stitch to the wall as you will see. An extra bead around the edge of the stitch will provide a nice amount of epoxy to seal the edges. Always use plenty of epoxy, too little may leave dry spots. With the grid, well coated with epoxy, place it across the crack, creating a stitch. Squeegee the epoxy as before, spreading the epoxy the full length of the stitch. When all your stitches are installed, you can then complete the injection process. After the epoxy has cured, the tape and the plastic are removed and the job is completed.